What's going on? In this video, I'm going to teach you seven iMovie tips and tricks that you can use in your next project. So on that note, no beating around the bush, let's just jump right in. As you can see, we're in my computer now. I already have iMovie open. I already have some clips on my timeline. So let's just get right to these tips. Tip number one, that is going to be editing these background templates. Now when you have background templates, the first thing you're going to want to do is come to this backgrounds over here, click on that, and you have all your background templates. Now the thing about these, when you first drag them onto your timeline, most people are probably going to assume that you can't do anything with them, you have to leave them exactly how they are. However, there are ways that you can edit these background templates to get a bit of a more unique look to them. So if we come over here to one of these background templates and drag it to our timeline, as you can see, simple red animated background right here but if we come to the top over here and as you see you have overlay settings you can change the way this background template is on your video so right now it's on cutaway if you click on green screen blue screen it's not really going to do much because there's no blue or green in this part of the background template if we look at split screen that's going to obviously split the screen. And if we come to picture in picture, that's going to allow you to adjust the background template however you want. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. You can do a bunch of different things with that. But for this, we're going to want to keep it at cutaway because that's going to keep it full screen for us. Next, we're going to want to come to this symbol over here, and that is going to allow us to adjust a lot of colors within this background template. This slider right here, that's going to adjust the shadows or the highlights of whatever thing you're trying to edit. So if we move these, as you see, it's going to get brighter or darker based on the direction we move it. So we move that a little bit. We move the opposite end a little bit. As you can see, it is changing quite drastically. Move it around a little bit more. Now, if we come to this next slider, that is the saturation. So it's basically how much color is going to be in this little background template. So we move it to the right. There's going to be more. Move it to the left. It's going to take away all the color. So we can move that as well. And this last slider is going to make it much warmer or much cooler. So it's going to add a more orangey tint to it or a bluer tint to it. So if you move it to the right, it should get a slightly more orange. When we move it to the left, it gets a little cooler. And the good thing about this is when you are, you're adjusting all three of these sliders, they're gonna work in cohesion together. So as you can see, if I move it all the way to the left and I move the next saturation slider all the way to the left, we went from a red background to a straight blue background. And we can adjust everything from there as well. Now we have a light blue background. And you're able to do this with many different types of the background templates. Every single background template, you have the ability to adjust in different ways obviously not all of them are going to turn out exactly how you may want them to but this is just a nice little customization option that you have so that you don't have to stick with exactly what iMovie provides you when it comes to these background templates tip number two and that's going to be adding a freeze frame to your movies now a freeze frame is something that's always going to be nice when you want to add a little bit more emphasis to maybe a point that you're trying to make or just add a little bit more emphasis to something that you're trying to show on your screen so if we come i know there's a yep there's a section right here where i'm zoomed in so we're gonna add a freeze frame to that just so it holds it a little bit longer right now this section is maybe a second long maybe a little less than that so if we add that freeze frame it's just going to add a little bit more emphasis to this section of the video now how do you add a freeze frame it's very simple you have the section that you want to have as the freeze frame and right now we have this little section right here and all you have to do is make sure it's highlighted you can right click on it you come down and you can click add freeze frame now you click add freeze frame as you see the clip changes it gets much bigger so if we watch it it's going to be a freeze frame as you can see that is the freeze frame right there and now things go back to normal within this freeze frame you can make some adjustments to it as well so if we make sure our freeze frame is highlighted we can shorten the freeze frame by clicking this little circle to the right over here and we drag that that's going to make the freeze frame a lot shorter or we can make it a lot longer by dragging it to the right and when you do that the clip is going to adjust accordingly 
if you want to add a freeze frame in the middle of a clip, so say we want to have a freeze frame right here, then you're going to have to make a few different types of adjustments than you did previously. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to find our, our beginning point of our freeze frame, make sure the clip is highlighted, and we're going to press I on our keyboard, and then we're going to come to where we want the freeze frame to end, and we're going to click O on our keyboard. That is going to set the end point and the out point for the freeze frame. And if we look at our timeline, we see that that part that we had pressed I and O on, those parts are highlighted now. And all you have to do is do the same exact thing. You right click and click add freeze frame. And now this part of the clip is now a freeze frame. And you can do the same thing. You can make the freeze frame longer, you can make it shorter, and you can really do exactly what you want with this freeze frame. My third tip is gonna be exploring more fonts than iMovie initially shows you. So that way you have many more options when it comes to the fonts that you have in iMovie. So what we're first gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to come to titles over here and we're gonna to wanna to pick one of these titles. Let's click expand. We're gonna click and drag that to our timeline. And when we click and make sure that that's highlighted and we come over to the right and we see fonts. This is gonna allow us to choose whatever font we want for this title. So if we click on the drop down, you see we have a very specific set of fonts that are right here. However, this isn't the full range of fonts that you have to choose from. So if we come all the way to the bottom, you see show fonts right here. We click on show fonts and you have another box that will appear. This is gonna be the full range of fonts that you have to choose from that are available to you for iMovie. So if we come here and we start scrolling, you see that there's a lot more options than you initially had at the beginning when you clicked on the drop down menu. So if we keep looking, we can pick any one of these. Let's just click a random one, papyrus. Don't know what that looks like. All right, looks pretty cool. So we select that, click the X, and now we have that font that wasn't available to us earlier. Now, something important to remember is that this does not work with every single title template. So some title templates may have that limited range of fonts but most of these titles are gonna give you the option to choose between more fonts than it initially shows you. My fourth tip is gonna be adding an instant replay. Now I know this isn't sports, but adding an instant replay in the middle of your video could be something that also shows emphasis, just like you did when you were adding the freeze frame. So to do an instant replay, all you have to do is find the area where you wanna have an instant replay. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did when we wanted to add a freeze frame. Because this is already a small clip, I can just click on that and get the whole clip highlighted. That's because I want the whole clip to be the instant replay. However, if I want an instant replay in the middle of this clip right next to it, I would come to the clip, find my end beginning point, press I, find my end point, and press O. As you can see, it highlights that area, but because I want this part to be an instant replay, I'm just gonna click on it, the whole clip is highlighted, and we're good. Now, to get the instant replay, you wanna come up to the menu over here, click Modify, come to the drop down, and you're gonna see Instant Replay. When you scroll down to Instant Replay, you're gonna have a few more options to choose from. You're gonna have 100%, 50%, 25%, and 10%. This is simply gonna be the speed at which the instant replay plays. So if I wanted a faster replay, I'd click 100%, that's gonna be normal speed. And if I wanted a much slower replay, I would click 10%. We're gonna click on 50% just to see how it looks. And this is something that we can always adjust in a little bit. So we're gonna click 50%. And as you can see, the clip starts playing normally and then the instant replay is gonna happen. Boom, that is the instant replay. And you see even a title pops up to the right corner that says instant replay. The good thing about this title, you can always change it. You can change whatever it says, say whatever. Didn't spell that right, but it's fine. And you have the option to adjust the speed at which this replay is played. So if I wanted it to be slower, I would click on this circle over here to the right, drag it to the right, that'll make it slower. If I drag it to the left, it makes it much faster. But you need to be careful because the title that is added isn't gonna be adjusted unless you adjust that with the clip. And the good thing, you don't need to have that saying in the top right corner. You don't need something that says instant replay. All you can, you can always highlight it, delete it. It's that simple. 
My next tip is gonna be applying a filter to all of your clips at the same time. Now in a lot of videos, you're gonna have clips that are in different settings. When you're in these different settings, that could really change how the whole video looks. It could be a little choppy and all that. But if you have the same filter applied to them, you're gonna keep a very similar look even though you're changing scenes. Now initially in iMovie, if you want to add a filter to a clip, you just click on the clip, make sure it's highlighted, come to the filter section, click on clip filter, and you can select a filter this way. So we click on that. As you can see, that filter is applied, but that filter isn't applied to the next clip or the next clip after that. It's not applied to all of the clips. It's just applied to that single clip. But if we want to apply one filter to every single one of our clips, all we have to do, come to the right, come to settings over here, we click on settings, and you see filter. We click on filter, and if we click on the same filter that we had for our first clip that we wanted, we click on that, that is gonna be applied to every single one of our clips. So if we look at this clip, look at a random clip a little further along, boom, as you see, the filter is applied to every single one of our separate clips. And if you wanna change the filter, all you have to do is come back to settings, click on filter again, and you have the same options that you just did. You can always click none if you don't want another filter, or you can add whatever filter you want. It's really up to you and how you want your video to go. My next tip is gonna be doing a voiceover. Now voiceovers can be really effective if you're trying to show something and just have your voice in the background. So say you're doing something like a cooking video and your cooking video is just you cooking. It's just showing all the steps that take place in the recipe that you're trying to show. However, it's a much more sped up version of these steps. So you don't want to be trying to talk very, very fast throughout all of these steps. This is where a voiceover can come into effect and in iMovie, having a voiceover is going to be something that is going to be really good for those types of videos. So how do you do a voiceover in iMovie? Well, all you have to do is come below your little screen right here and you see this microphone. When you click on this microphone and you come to the middle, there is gonna be something new that pops up. You have these dots, you have this big red button and you have more sliders over here. These dots are gonna indicate the volume at which you're speaking. So whatever volume the program hears at the moment, that is the volume that is gonna be displayed right there. It's very important because you wanna try and keep this between the orange and green range. Once it starts getting to red, that's gonna be a huge indicator that you're talking too loud or your speaker is too loud, your, the microphone is too loud. The input of the sound that is going into iMovie is very, very loud. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to adjust in a little bit. If we come to the sliders over here and we click on that, you're gonna see that you have the input source, the volume, and mute project. The input source is gonna be basically the microphone that you're using. I highly recommend always using a microphone because most of the time, whatever you're using, if you just, like right now, I'm just using a Mac. If I was just using the Mac without a microphone, the sound wouldn't be nearly as crisp as it could be. So I would always recommend using some sort of microphone. The volume. This is gonna be what you can do to adjust that red if you see too much red. So if it, you're seeing too much red, if you're speaking normally and it's red all the time, you're gonna to wanna to bring that volume down. So if I bring it down right now, as you can see, it's not going up even the orange, but I'm gonna to wanna to bring it back up to where it was because that's where I like it. And now you have mute project. With mute project, this is only relevant when it comes to the actual voiceover. So if you have this checked, if there is sound while you're recording your voiceover, no sound is gonna be played in iMovie. However, if you uncheck this and there is sound in the parts that you're trying to record over, that sound is gonna play. And in the end, I think that could really screw up your voiceover. You can have a little bit of an echo and that's not something you're gonna want in your voiceovers. But again, that's a personal choice. So you do what you feel like you have to do on that. Now this big red button right here, that is the record button. So if we click on that, you're gonna get a countdown. That's something that's gonna be very important. However, with this, you're gonna have a three second countdown before the recording actually starts. So you make sure you come to your timeline and figure out exactly where you want the voiceover to start. 
So we're going to start at the very beginning and we're going to click on the record button and you're going to see exactly what happens prior to the recording process. So we click on it to two. two. And now that I start talking, you can see if we keep an eye on our timeline, you're going to see that the waveform is going to actually start recording. So our voiceover is going to appear underneath our timeline. And when you want to stop recording, all you have to do, click on the red button again. And now our recording is down there. Our voiceover is below our timeline. And just like that, you have a voiceover for your video. My seventh and final tip is gonna be fading audio. When it comes to any video project that you do, having audio that can fade in and fade out is gonna seem a lot more natural than those harsh cuts when it comes to the audio. And fading audio in iMovie is very, very simple. So if we just come to any clip that we have and we come to the bottom when you see the blue and that is gonna be where our audio is. This is where you can adjust the volume of the audio if you want, but we're gonna focus on the fading in and fading out of the audio. So if we come to the very end of the clip, we're gonna see our arrow turn into an arrow that points side to side. So if we click on that, we can drag it to the right or drag it to the left. And as we drag it, you're gonna see a little bit of a black curve that appears over this blue section. That is the fading of the audio. So as you can see, as it's going up, the curve starts to disappear. And when that curve completely disappears, you're at full volume with your audio. So if we do it on the other end, that is gonna be fading out. And you see, it's the exact same thing. So as we start this clip, the audio is gonna start fading in. And then as we start to exit the clip, the audio is gonna start fading out. But say you wanna fade audio in the very middle of a clip. You can also do this in iMovie as well. So we're going to come to this next clip. And the good thing with iMovie and the audio, you can really select exactly where you want the audio to start fading. So we're going to pick almost the very middle of this clip and the audio, and we're going to fade the very middle of this audio. So what we can do, we can come to this blue section. We can press on option, hold option, and we're going to click on the middle of the audio. As you can see, a little dot appears, and this dot gives us the freedom to drag up and down. However, we, you can see that it's still dragging the entire audio clip up and down. So to fix this, we're gonna wanna add two more points on either side of that dot. So we click and hold option again, we click and we click. Now I have two more dots on either side, but our focus is gonna be on this middle dot. We click on this middle dot again, and now once we drag it up and down, as you can see, the volume of that specific area is gonna start fading in or fade out depending on where we drag it. So now if we look at it, as we can see, the audio starts to fade out towards this dot. And as we get further away from the dot, the audio starts to fade back in. That is another way that you can fade in and fade out of audio in iMovie. All of these tips are very useful and they can really help you elevate your project to that next level. So if you found this video to be very informative, if you found this video to be very helpful, if these are tips that you feel like you can use to really help you with your next iMovie project, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button as well because that's only gonna help me in the end and it's gonna keep pushing me to make more videos like this for you. And leave a comment below. Leave a comment letting me know which one of these tips was your favorite. And other than that, I have nothing else for you. I'm Steven from Dare to Capture. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.